All right, and welcome back. So today we are going to be going through section 2.6, the last section in this chapter, which is all about planning a proof. So by the end of this video, we should be able to state and apply the theorems about angles that are supplementary to or complementary to different congruent angles. And we're going to be able to plan and write proofs. Now, you may have heard that proofs are scary and proofs are tough, and I promise you they're not that bad. All proofs are, it's just a logical step-by-step -step way of expressing your thinking. That's all it is. And we're gonna work on these throughout the year and I can promise you it's going to get better and better as we go. But please, just take a deep breath. Let's have out our guide and notes and let's begin. So before you're able to write a proof, you're gonna need to have a plan for the proof. Sometimes you're gonna see immediately how to do the proof and sometimes Maybe a previous proof is going to give you a plan, as in the first exercise that we're going to be doing. So we have this statement that if two angles are supplements of congruent angles or of the same angle, then the two angles are going to be congruent. And in example one, we're going to be discussing it. So we are given that angle one and angle two are supplementary. We're given angle three and angle four are supplementary as well. We're given the angle two is congruent to angle four. And what we're trying to prove is that angle one is congruent to angle three. So there might be a couple things that right off the bat step out into your mind. So a quick plan for this. There's a couple of things that we can conclude. We can conclude that the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two is equal to 180 because angle one and angle two are supplementary. And likewise, three and four are as well. So we can also state that the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle four is equal to 180 degrees. Well, you might have noticed that we said the same value twice. So by substitution, since those two statements are both equal to 180, we can set the statements up equal to each other. So now we have measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two is equal to the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle four. Well, we're also given that angle two is congruent to angle four, which is the same thing as saying that the measure of angle two is equal to the measure of angle four. And by subtraction, we're gonna have that the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle three, or that angle one is congruent to angle three. And if we were just to take out angle two and take out angle four on both sides, we're left with angles one and angle two. We're also given that if two angles are complements of congruent angles or of the same angle, then the two angles are congruent. So we're gonna want to write a proof for the theorem above. So it's gonna be very similar to the proof of the previous theorem that we did. And we are given angle five and angle six are complementary, as well as angle seven and angle eight are complementary. And we want to prove that the angle six is congruent to angle eight. Well, sometimes you need to try several times to find a plan that works. If you don't see immediately how to do a proof, here are two different methods for you to try to find a plan. So method one, you want to gather as much information as you can. Sometimes what you can see will show you a plan. So reread the given. What does it tell you? Look at the diagram. What other information can you conclude? Or we can go with method two. You can just work backwards. You can go to the conclusion, the part that you would like to prove and think, hmm, this conclusion would be true if what? And if blank would be true if blank and so on until you have a plan for the proof. Typically, I like to work with method two by working backwards. I find that especially in the beginning, it's gonna be easier for us to see how to work backwards than it is to work forward. But eventually, as the year goes on, we're gonna get really solid and really strong with these two methods overall. So whichever method works best for you, that's gonna be great. But again, typically in the very beginning, I find that method two working backwards, is a little bit easier for students to work with. So in this example, we're given that ray BD bisects angle ABE, and we want to prove angle two is congruent to angle four. So the solution, let's use method one when we're talking about planning. 
From the given, we can conclude that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 because BD bisects angle ABE. We also can see that angle 1 and angle 4 are vertical angles. So therefore, angle 1 is going to be congruent to angle 4. And now, since we know that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 and angle 1 is congruent to angle 4, we can conclude that angle 2 is congruent to angle 4. And if we were to eventually start writing out this proof, this would be by substitution. This is not going to be transitive because 1 to 2 and 1 to 4 is 2 to 4. Not 1 to 2, 2 to 4, 1 to 4. The transitive property is going to be very specific. So this would be a great example on how to work with the substitution property versus the transitive property. So with this, please try to write the actual proof for this example. And lastly, we have example number three. So we are given that the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle two, and we're trying to prove that angle four is supplementary to angle five. And one thing that uh, just popped out in my head is angle four is supplementary to angle five, which means that the measure of angle four plus the measure of angle five has to be equal to 180. Well, this is gonna be true if the measure of angle four is equal to the measure of angle two, since the measure of angle four plus the measure of angle two is also equal to 180 degrees since they form a straight line. We can also conclude that from the diagram, measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle five. Those are gonna be vertical angles. And measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle two. So then we get that the measure of angle two is equal to the measure of angle five. And that's again working backwards. So typically students do a, a little bit better when it comes to working backwards. All right, kiddos, please work on problems three through five on the guide of notes. Keep working hard. I know proofs are going to be a little bit of a stumbling block in the very beginning, and that's totally okay. So long as we are working through it and just trying to get better, that's all that matters. Please let me know if you have any questions, and I'll talk to you soon.